to Katrina's Creations. This is episode 154, and this is the the second week in our month-long giveaway. So stay tuned for a little bit further into the podcast where I announce last week's winner and will announce what the prize is going to be for this week. So let's get started. I have two finished, well, I guess you could technically say three finished objects. The first is, yet again, I really am not showing the same dishcloth over and over again, but there's, I think for a while now, the very last dishcloth. This one is for my mother, so I now have two black ones for my mom, and I do have enough yarn to make probably two more. I don't know if that's going to happen or not, because to be honest, I'm getting tired of making dishcloths. So, but I have enough right now for everybody for Christmas. So if I have time, I'll make more. But as of yet, right as of right now, this is the last one for for a while. So that was object number one. Object number two, I entered into. Actually, I could enter this in the holiday along too. I forgot to do that. I'll have to enter this in the holiday along, put my information in. I entered this in the holiday along. I have two of them. They are just simple rectangles. They're knitted. They have a little garter edge here, and then it's stocking stitch. It's just garter on the edges and all the way around the, the edge, about an inch of garter. Now, you may say, what in the world are these for? Well, my husband broke the chair in the bedroom. It wasn't me. I did not sit on it and break it, so that's a good thing. Um, but he sat down, and the frame part broke, and the leg broke off, and he kept trying to fix it, and it became apparent that it was not fixable, or if it was, it was going to take more effort to fix than to replace. So he replaced it with another chair, but it does not have the arm protectors, and it's kind of like a club chair shape where you got, you know, your arms are going to rest on it. So he asked me, now he very rarely asks me to make anything for him, but he asked me if I would make um, some protectors for the arms so that they don't get dirty or stained, because this is washable acrylic, so I can just wash it when it gets dirty. It does have a little bit of a sparkle to it. Not much. I mean, it's just more of a sheen. It's not so much. He would not like sparkles. Sorry about that. Dropped a ball of yarn. This is all that's left. And this was a yarn that kind of looks like shoelaces. It's flat. It's a ribbon type of yarn. And if you recall the episode, The Tub of Shame, this was the real short scarf that I said there was nothing wrong with, it just wasn't long enough, this is it. So I do have a little bit left. No clue what I'm going to do with it, but I think I got this at a clearance sale for about $2 a skein, but it does have a little a little sheen to it. You can kind of see, a, there you can see a little bit of the sparkle to it, but it's not enough that he won't like it. So I have two of those. So those are my total three finished objects. So now what am I working on? I've, I have put some progress onto my cardigan. In fact, I'm almost up to the back. I've got about this much more maybe to go, and then I'll be ready to start doing the front part of it. So let me show you. I am using a, I think it's a five millimeter. Yes, I'm using a five millimeter hook. And you can see the progress keeper from last week. So I have gone all the way up here, which doesn't look like a lot until you realize how wide this is, because it's as wide. Actually, it's a little wider than I am. And uh, it is probably approximately, oh, I'd say maybe 25 inches across, about 25 inches across. So there's the whole thing so far. You can see the bottom. Well, maybe, yeah, there you can see the bottom. And it goes all the way up here. And I'm very short-waisted, so when I'm holding this to my back, it's coming right about, it's just out, off camera, it's coming right about to here on me. So, um, yeah, I don't think I have too much more to go for the back because I don't want this a real to be a real long sweater. I like it to just come to my waist 
just a slightly below my waistline, like the top of my hips. That's where I want it to go. So anyway, that's where it's at. And so I'm, I'm making some progress on that. And I just realized I've been downstairs making pizza. If you watched the episode on Wednesday with the Mojanos um, missionary family and we did pizza, well, Dave's been craving the pizza ever since we made it Monday night. Tonight's Thursday night. We're having it again. Um, yeah, we both like pizza, but he liked that. So I have enough leftover stuff, so I've been making it, so I'm not wearing my wedding ring. And I just realized that when I was putting stuff up here, it's like, this feels weird. I took it off to knead the dough, so it's sitting down on the kitchen counter someplace. Anyway, um, better than in the dough. I know it's not in the dough, so we won't be chewing on my wedding ring. So the other project I'm working on, now that I have finished all of my knitting dishcloth things, um, I am concentrating on some Christmas knits. And I need to make a cowl for my daughter and for my daughter-in-law. So I started one of those. And the yarn I am using, here it is. It is a single ply, which means it's just single twisted. There you can see it. It's kind of a, it's not really what you call yes, a rustic. It's kind of a primitive looking yarn because it is single spun. It's not necessarily even. And this yarn, I have two skeins of it. It's called Wisdom Yarns, and it's poems. It's 100% wool, and there's 109 yards per skein, and it is a worsted weight. Actually, I would consider it kind of a heavy worsted, almost an Aran weight. So here's what the label looks like. And I have two skeins of this. I don't believe it has a color number. It's actually from Universal Yarns. So it says Wisdom Yarns, but when you look at the back here, it says Universal Yarns. Um, it's made in Turkey. And the color is Hearth. So seeing as my daughter's house caught on fire, this might not be the color for her. Um, I'm not sure which of my, whether my daughter or my daughter-in-law is going to get this one. But it's pretty. It's got like a, a red. I mean, it's a very muted red, almost like a brick type of red. And then it has some tans and kind of almost into a light goldeny beigey tan and some grays and stuff in here. So it's really pretty. Um, I have two skeins of it. And the pattern I'm going to make is from Knit Crate a couple of months ago. Let me see which month was it from. Oh, more than a couple months ago, it was from November of last year. So it's from the November 2018 book. And let me show you what it looks like. It's called the Twinkle Cow. I had problems finding a cow that I liked that had the amount of yardage because I do have limited amount of this yarn. Like I said, I have two skeins and there's 109. So I only have 108 or 218 yards total so trying to find a cowl that just had that much i knew crochet was not even going to be an option because there's just not enough yarn so this is the pattern i'm doing it has like right in the center in here it has like little um x's like little slashes that go by by dropping stitches um like zigzags type of slashes so I thought it looked kind of interesting. It looked simple enough. So this is my car knitting at this point. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm excited about that. And um, I'm making this and I have to make another one yet. So those will be Christmas knits for the car. And then I have, I haven't started it yet, but I have my next big knitting project. I try to have a crochet project and a knitting project going on at both times. So let me show you. I haven't decided which sweater I'm making, but I'll show you the yarn. This yarn, by the way, that I'm making these cowls out of, I got at Webs last year when I was on vacation. Now, if you're not familiar with what Webs is, it's called, I don't know what the W-E-B-S stands for, but it's America's Yarn Store. And it's it's very large to begin with. It's a large yarn store. And the, the front part of the showroom, the prices are, are you know, about average. Um, they don't sell, like, hand-dyed stuff. It's all commercial brand yarns. 
but there's a warehouse in the back. I'm sorry that if, if they adjusted the picture, I just realized that the camera had slid and you were only seeing me from here up, so I had to move it back down. Um, anyway, they have a warehouse in the back, and in the warehouse they have all kinds of things on clearance, and each row is organized by yarn weight. And then they have grab boxes, which are like $2 a skein, whatever's in the box. So you know me with cheap plastered on my forehead. I spent like $146 total and walked out with probably over $300 worth of yarn. And so a lot of what you see back here is what I got there last year. Um, I did do a yarn haul on all of that. But this was some of it that I got at Webb's. I love the color of it. It's kind of a periwinkle. It's showing up pretty true to form. It's it's a very, very, very light kind of pearly pink. And it's an Aran weight. And I have, I forget how many skeins. I think I have seven or eight skeins of this. These are 100 gram balls. It's a James C. Brett yarn. And... It comes from West Yorkshire over in the UK. The shade is just AL4. You think they would give names to pretty colors? Why not? Why not just give it, you know, instead of numbers? Anyway, it's called Aztec and it has alpaca in it. It is really soft, um, but it is machine washable because it's 90% acrylic and only 10% alpaca. So I have been wanting to make something with this ever since I bought it last year. Because I just think it's really pretty. Like I said, it's not a, it's not a pink pink. It kind of is almost a purpley pink. It, it just reminds me, I think periwinkle is about the closest, uh, description of it. So I'm excited to start a sweater in this. So I'll have two sweaters going. I'll have, well, a sweater and a cardigan. One in knit and one in crochet. So now it's time to check out what you guys have been making this week. So if you were watching last week, we started as of October 1st a make-along, and it's a combined make-along with Sarah Oliver of The Last Who Knits. Uh, this was her idea, and she asked if I would be interested, and of course I was, because it sounds like it's going to be a ton of fun. So what are we doing? You could submit crocheted or knitted items onto the Facebook group. If you go to Katrina Knits Facebook group, um, Type up in the search search window, holiday along 2019. I'll put it somewhere here, what it looks like. 
Um, I think it's the first one that pops up. Um, if you click on that and ask to be a member, one of us will will go ahead and click the confirm button. Um, it is a closed group just because we don't want advertisements and things to come in. Um, so we want to just limit it to the projects that people are making. They can be things that you are making for a gift or whatever. Um, they do not have to be holiday colored, as you can see by the little brown arm covers that I made. They do not need to be holiday related. It just has to be something that is being made between October 1st and December 31st. However, when you submit your picture, please tell us whether it is crocheted or knitted. Most of the time we can tell, but sometimes if the picture is a little blurry or if it's not close enough, it's sometimes hard to distinguish. So tell us if it is knitted or crocheted, what weight yarn you used, and approximately how many yards. It does not have to be something really scientific and specific. Just a good educated guess is, is plenty. Um, and then we will get you entered under Team Crochet or Team Knit, because not only is there going to be, um, the, the make-along itself is, is actually for a prize at the very end. Sarah will draw one, and I will draw one from the entries from both Team Crochet and Team Knit, but we're also traveling across Europe from, um, and traveling across the ocean, actually, from Scotland to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, which is where I live. And for every yard you clock in, uh, it, it is equal to a certain number of miles or portions of a mile. And, um, so Sarah's doing all the calculating, thank goodness, because as you guys know, math is not my strong point. And so she's keeping track of both teams. And so each week we will be giving a progress report on how far the teams have gotten. And you can be on both teams. I mean, like I said, this part of it's not for a prize. It's just for fun. So this week, I'm going to be talking about Team Crochet. I won't be doing both teams in a week because that would be a little boring if they're at the same location. So one week, I will be doing Crochet, and her podcast will have Team Knits progress. And then the next week, we will reverse it. So next week, I will be doing the progress for Team Knit. So this week, it'll be Team Crochet. And let's see how far they got. She divided the trip into different legs or sections. They have actually gotten to leg four of the journey. They are now traveling between Munich, Germany and Budapest, Hungary. You guys have crocheted an amazing total 12,000 yards. Yes, 12,000 yards. And that's just week one. Uh, so I don't know exactly how many miles you all have traveled, but it is quite a bit to go from Scotland to Germany. Actually, you're in Austria right now. Uh, the team is currently in a town called Wells, Austria. So I'm going to post some pictures that Sarah sent me of what Wells, Austria looks like. And now I'll give you a little bit of information about that town. Wells is the eighth largest city in Austria. It lies on the Tron River at the foothills of the Eastern Alps, southwest of Linz. The site has been occupied since prehistoric times. Areas of Wells have been settled since the Neolithic area, era, which is between 3,500 and 1,700 B.C. Uh, they have archaeological finds that they have come up with that are simple tools, especially along the banks of the river. Uh, their currency is the euro. And the weather they are experiencing, as you watch this today on Saturday, is 68 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 20 degrees Celsius. So that's just a little tidbit in the crochet travels of how far they've gotten. Make sure you stay, come back next week to find out how far the knitting team has, has gotten. And in the meantime, I will remember to enter my dishcloth so that we can count every little bit because we got to try to keep up with team crochet. And like I said, you can enter on both sides. It really doesn't matter. There's no prize involved with the mileage. We just thought it would be for fun. And again, that was Sarah's idea, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so you could see on the map 
how far you had traveled so far, but you have gone through so far, uh, Scotland to London through Paris and now you're headed towards Munich. So anyway, that was pretty cool. I had lots of fun. I'm enjoying this. I'm loving seeing your projects. And if you submitted a project on the holiday along, I'm not going to show it on the show and tell because that would spoil the surprise. So if it's just something entered in the show and tell, I put it under show and tell. If it's the holiday along, I'm holding them all till the end. And then I'll do one big podcast of nothing but everybody's projects. And if you do know the pattern for your project, please put that in there too, because if we all see if something we like, it's nice to know what the name of the pattern is so that we can make it. And if we know who made it, we know who to get in contact with if we have questions. So, um, yes, that is the news on our holiday along. Now it's time for acquisitions. Now I hinted at this last week. I said, you're not going to believe what I bought. And boy, are you not going to believe what I bought. Are you ready for this? Okay, this looks like a lot of yarn. Look how big it is this way. Oh, yes. This is 4,800 yards of wool. So you're probably thinking, are you crazy, Katrina? What in the world are you going to do with this? Well, I got this from Peter Patch's Yarn which is in Rhode Island. I have been there before. It's a warehouse up on the second floor, and they have a lot of mill ends. Uh, there's a lot of, um, in the, the Blackstone Valley of Connecticut and Rhode Island, right up, um, it runs up through Connecticut and Massachusetts, but there's just a lot of mill work um, in that whole area of New England. And, yeah, so there's lots of yarn stores. There's lots of yarn stuff. And this is a factory that has a lot of yarn. Um, and they sell it really, really cheap. And then they run specials. When I went there a couple years ago, I got yarn. It was $2 per pound, I think. I think that's what it was. Maybe, no, it was $8 per pound and you had to buy two pounds. That's what it was. Um, it's been, it's been several years since I've been there. So anyway, I'm on their mailing list, and he will mail your yarn to you. So when I saw this come up, and it's plain yarn, it has no coloring to it. Do you see where I'm going with this? I'm going to divide this up. Now, this is three pounds of yarn. It's a total of 4,800 yards. Each pound has 1,600 yards in it. This is a fingering weight, um, fit between a fingering and a sock weight. So on average, if you bought a skein of yarn, a 100 gram skein of fingering to sport weight yarn is going to be roughly around 400 yards, give or take. So I'm going to divide all three of these pounds into 400 yard skeins, which will give me three skeins per pound or a total of nine skeins of yarn, each containing 400 yards. Then I'm going to dye these and I'm going to dye them in lots of three. So that way you would have like 1200 yards if you were to buy all three. My idea is I'm going to put these in my Etsy shop if they turn out good, which I hope they do, but I'm going to put them in my Etsy shop and you can either buy the all three of them together for a sweaters quantity uh, which for most people, 1,200 yards is plenty for a sweater quantity. Me, it's iffy, but um, yeah, sadly, it's iffy for me. But for the average individual, that should be plenty uh, to make a sweater with. So they will be in groups of three, or you can just purchase them one, you know, like one at a time. So we'll see how that goes. But that's what I bought this with the intention of doing. So it is not a merino. It is 100% wool. Um, but like I said, I don't know what kind of wool. It's not, it's not soft, but it's not scratchy either. It kind of reminds me of Peruvian Highland wool. That's what it feels like to me. Like I said, it's not, it's not scratchy or itchy. It's not what I would ca call rustic, but it's not a merino superwash either that's going to be really, really soft. So I'm petting it. Do you notice that? I'm sitting here petting the yarn. It's like I'm petting the yarn. Um, so that's what I am doing with all of this yarn. 
So that is my acquisitions for this week. Now it's time to announce the giveaway winner. Now, last week, this was the yarn that was for the giveaway. It's Carlton Alpaca Divine. This is what it looks like, and the colors are showing pretty true. It is 10% alpaca, 10% wool, 80% premium acrylic, and there is 601 yards in the skein, and I would say it's a light fingering weight would be my guess here. Uh, looking at the needle size, yeah, I'd say it's a it's a light fingering. So anyway, I did something different this week. I'm not real tech savvy. Um, in case you haven't noticed from the editing and stuff, I'm not real tech savvy. So every time I've done a giveaway in the past, I have literally handwritten everybody's name down with a number next to it and then used random number generator and then gone down and figured out which number went to which person. I mean, I numbered them, you know, in numerical order. So the first person was number one, second person was number two, you know. I had pages and pages of this for some of the giveaways because some of the giveaways I had over 600 people enter. And I was like, there's got to be an easier way to do this. Well, turns out there is. Um, I finally figured out how to do the random comment generator on YouTube. So uh, that's what I used this time. There was a total of 195 entries. Uh, to enter, all you had to do was leave a comment, be a subscriber, and give me a thumbs up. 195 entries. So using the comment generator, I'm very excited over who the winner is because they have been, they have watched this channel for a very, very long time, and they comment every single week on every single video. So I am very happy to announce that it is Jean Horn. So congratulations, Jean. Uh, she and I chat back and forth all the time. So when I saw her name pop up, I was like, oh, wow, I'm excited. So Jean, if you would go over to email and email me at katrinascreations at yahoo.com with your address, I will get it out to you as soon as I hear from you. So once again, congratulations to Jean. So for this week's giveaway, it's going to be, uh, you do need to be a subscriber. You do need to be over 18 years old. Okay. Um, the reason I say that is because I feel really funny if a child wins and I have to ask for their address. It, I just feel a little on the creepy side. So you must be over 18 in order to enter. And I think most everybody who watches the channel is, but just in case. Um, so you need to be a subscriber. You need to give me a thumbs up. And leave a comment down below in the description box. Just tell me what you're working on right now. That's all you have to do. Let me know what your project is. Um, I like seeing different things and hearing different projects. So let me know what's what's on your needles or hook right now. And I will be drawing a winner again next week. Now, this week's yarn, I don't remember what it's called. Um... It is, I know what the name of the, the color is. I don't remember the name of the yarn company. I do believe there's about 400 yards here. It does sparkle. You can see the sparkles in there. It's showing up blue on the camera, but it's actually different shades of purple. It's purples, and there's like, a, it's just different shades of purple. It's looking like it's brown, and, well, there it looks a little purple. Yeah, it's definitely a purple like a real light lavender-y type of purple, and it sparkles. So there, yeah, there you can see the sparkles. It has pretty sparkles in it, and I think they're gold. They look like gold, but well, they might be silver. It's hard for me to tell. But anyway, it's got sparklies in there. When I hold it up close, it looks blue. When I hold it back here, it looks a little bit truer to color, but it's still a little bit more purple than what's showing up on camera. Like I said, it's about a lavender type of color, and it's different shades. It was called Wisterious, I guess because it kind of looks like Wisteria, the color of it, and then it's got sparkles in it. And like I said, it is a um, it's a fingering weight yarn. I have a lot of fingering weight. It is a fingering weight yarn, and but I don't remember the ball band fell off. So I do not remember what the maker is. I do believe it's a superwash merino because it's really soft. If I can track down what this is, I will put it 
somewhere here. So um, I think I I think I can find out what it is because yeah, I talked about it on another video before the ball band fell off. So um, I think I should be able to tell you what it is. So anyway, this is it. I do believe it might be hand dyed too. I could be wrong there. Could be totally wrong. If I find it, I will put the information up what exactly it is. But this is a skein of yarn for this week's giveaway. And again, all you need to do is thumbs up, be a subscriber over the 18, the age of 18, and leave a comment telling me what project you're currently working on. Now it's time for our. Now in our come and get it section this week, we have Annie's uh, craft store. I'm, I'm on a, I'm on an Afghan kick this week for some reason. So we have a crocheted Afghan revival book. There's 40 different like classic vintage style Afghans in this book. So it's 1999, but you're getting 40 patterns in there. That's basically 50 cents a pattern. Pretty cheap. Um, it is current, but I will tell you, it is currently out of stock because it's very popular, but it's coming back into stock as of the 19th of October. So, you know, next week by next Saturday, you should be able to order it. Um, but anyway, it is called the Crochet Afghan Revival for 1999. I'm reading from my notes because I would never remember all the sales. They also, let's see. There is a quilt over in the knitted section. Check out their quilt inspired Afghans. If you like quilts, but you don't want to do a quilt um, or do all the tedious sewing, they actually have some Afghans that are knitted that look just like quilt blocks. It was pretty wild. I've never seen that before. I've thought about doing something like that, but I've never actually tried it. Um, but there's, and I, I started to show one picture, but then I realized there was a whole bunch of different patterns that were over there. And on average, they're between $4.99 and $6.99 per pattern. And there's a whole bunch of them. So, um, yeah, go over and check out the quilt inspired Afghans in the knitted section. Uh, there's also a thing called Creative Knits Mix and Match Sampler for $8.99. Now, what that is, it's a group of squares, and each square has a different pattern. And you do all the patterns and then hook them together. It's a nice way to learn different knitting stitches without committing to a huge project. Because if you don't enjoy the stitch, you're only doing squares that are about 12 by 12, you know, like a foot by a foot. So it's a nice way to learn different stitches without committing to a big project to do so. But you have a big project when you finish. I made one years ago, and I have showed it on the podcast, but mine was a pattern from Leisure Arts, uh, and it was an old pattern. I'm sure they still sell it, um, and it was gifted to me. So um, they're fun to do, and you can mix and match the different patterns and do whatever you want to with them, but it's, like I said, a fun way to learn different knitting stitches. That, again, is over at Annie's. And the mix and match sampler is $8.99. Blueprint is running a sale where you buy two items, you get 40% off. You do need to use a coupon code 40 off 2 Consumer Crafts has a yarn holder with a handle. Now, when I say it's a yarn hold holder, it looks like a plastic jar with a screw-on lid, and then it has a handle. And you put your skein of yarn in it like, like that, and then you put your skein of yarn in it like the, that and then the yarn comes out the top of your skein and goes through the hole in the top of the screw on lid and you can carry it around it's basically a hard shell project bag to hold your yarn um anyway they had that over there on sale for six dollars and 27 cents i've actually made one myself before added out of an oversized margarine tub that i the lid i just cut a hole in and it, it pretty much does the same thing, and it was free. But anyway, if you want the real thing, it's over at Consumer Crafts. Create for Less has, it's called South Made Crochet Cotton in number 10 size for two uh, for two ninety nine. So that's the cotton thread that you make doilies out of, and it is number 10 size. The Dollar Yarn, or the... 
The Dollar Tree has yarn for sale over on their site, uh, their website as well. You do need to be aware you can't buy just one skein at a time. You do need to buy the entire case. Some of the cases are six to eight skeins of yarn, but some will go up to like 54 skeins of yarn. So you and your neighborhood could go together and buy yarn if you so choose. Um, but that's over at the Dollar Tree. The Hobium, their Stars of the Month um, which is like whatever's running on sale. They have Lauren, Lauren Natural Baby Yarn. It's a cotton, and there are 218 yards per skein. It's 95 cents per skein. If you buy 10, they come in a package, so you can't mix and match. You have to buy all 10 of the same color. Uh, but if you're using it to make something substantial, like a baby blanket or even a sweater for yourself, because they come in all different colors, not just baby colors. It says it's natural baby yarn. They're not just baby colors. There's like 20 some different colors to choose from. Um, but if you buy a pack of 10, so that would be 2,180 yards, enough for a sweater again. Um, it's 86 cents per skein is what it breaks down to. So that's a really good price if you are into some cotton yarn. I know we're moving out of the cotton weather, um, but um, it gives you plenty of time to make it for next spring. So ice yarns, um, ice yarns, just go over and check out there. There's just too much to new, to even mention. I went over and looked to see if I could find something to show you guys, but to be honest, there's so much over there to choose from to even pick something. Just go over and check out their clearance section, their garage sale section, their closeout yarn. They have several sections that are yarn that is like going away and so it's even cheaper than the other yarn that they have all the time. If you watch The Secret Yarnery, she buys almost all of her yarn exclusively from Ice Yarns. So um yeah, I like watching her her uh yarn hauls because I can see what they really look like cuz it's on the website it's sometimes hard to see. Uh so anyway, that is Ice Yarns. Knit Crates, you can get 20% off your first subscription box if you use the coupon code KCREATIONS20. Knit Picks is running 20% off of their Stroll brand yarns right now. Leisure Arts, um, again, I'm into the Afghans. So they have in the crochet section, it's called Grannies in Bloom. And there are six different granny square patterns that kind of look like flowers. Um, so there's, uh, you can make up to six different afghans or you could mix and match, but they are granny squares that have like a flower motif to them. And those are $7.99 for that pattern book. And in the knitting section, they have a thing called decorator throws. And that, let, again, is letting you kind of mix and match to come up with different afghans. And that is $7.99. Some of these are digital downloads, um, which save you a little money because you don't pay shipping or anything. Uh, so sometimes digital is the way to go. And then you can just download and print it out yourself. So, um, yeah, anyway, that's what is over at Leisure Arts. Lion Brand is running 40% off of all of their kits site-wide. So when it's a kit, it means it's the pattern and the yarn. So it's a good deal, 40% off. That's that's pretty good. The coupon code you do need to use for that is 40kits. So that is all of our sales for this week. Don't forget to enter for next week's giveaway. And Jean, don't forget to get in contact with me over on Yahoo so I can get your yarn out to you. And Wednesday's video, I have Knit Crate due in. Um, actually, when you're watching it, I would have already gotten it. It's due in on Friday, and I'm filming on Thursday. So, um, yeah, Wednesday's video will be my Knit Crate unboxing for October of 2019. So make sure you stay tuned and check that one out. So that's it for this week. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching and sticking with this to the end. And I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I will see you again on Wednesday.